Okay, we are back in the mega base. We now have our smelters set up, and we have some ore. The problem is that these are all on trains that are 3-8 consist, so 11 long rather than the 5 long trains we've been using. And even with the 5 long trains, our signaling down here is kind of rugged. Uh, our distance between signals does not fit an entire train, which means I've had to adjust some signals here. Uh, these don't actually have a full train length available on their outputs, so we're already iffy for 1.4s. And when we get 3.8s running down here, this is going to cause problems. And I don't want to be in the middle of something else and have to come back and rework everything, so I'm going to proactively go out and fix this up as it is right now which means basically replacing all of the signals and that means I will need to destroy or relocate these stations off on the right as I roll it across I will need to be very careful about how I manipulate my signals as I come through the main base um, and at least temporarily, I'm going to need to have radar coverage so I can see what's going on. Well, I have all of this on some new blueprints, which I've set up. I've made a copy of the planning acre, which is unchanged. This is just, well, it's not unchanged, but it is power. And it is the red and green wire. And I removed the lamps. So we're not going to have lamps on this anymore. The problem was the lamps were not symmetric. I couldn't rotate it 180 degrees and plant it down and have the same lamp output and it made it look ugly um, almost as bad as the fact that I have uh, doubled up some of my power lines here like you can see here uh, and that got into the blueprint somewhere so I'll be ripping up power and signals and placing down new power and new signals kind of a maintenance mode it's too bad I can't set up uh, Farl to do this for me it would it could do some of it, uh, but it can't relay out my, um, my intersections. So part of this was I did a new service junction, and this basically tightens up the signaling because in the new cells, um, well, let, let me plop one down and we'll and we'll see what's going on here. Uh, where am I? I am here. Let's go somewhere I've got a whole bunch of space to work with. Let's go out to, say, this guy. Oh, and... Once I go over what we're about to do, I am going to do a radical reconstruction of my hotbar and my inventory. I'm going to embrace the whole um, creative mod thing. So let's see. The new cell goes down here and I can shift click to put it in place. It actually includes a, a creative mode radar. So here's the new here's the new cell. Um, you can see that these have been clamped way in. For instance, the exit is no longer down here; it's all the way up here because this length here, this from these to here and here to inside here, is just barely long enough for my 3/8 trains. See, that's a 3/8 train right there. So my choices were to go with a bigger grid and relay out everything from scratch or tighten these up and have my uh, have my blocks um, have some kind of interaction. So for instance, I'm forced to have some interactions. So in order for anybody to go right to left here, the traffic going north here has to have exited this half block. Uh, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, if it turns out to be a problem, I can toss in another signal here 
and accept the fact that I don't actually have two trains going north at once properly. Yuck. Anyway. Um, so that's got that. So basically I want to lay this out all over where I don't previously have stuff. And I have a... I will, I will need a... Uh, upgrade planner that removes what I want to remove. What I want to remove initially is power, power poles and lamps and both kinds of signals. Just like that. And I also will need a remove trees and rocks. Now these are only going to work inside the radar area, which is why this has a radar on it. So as I expand this out, I will repeat that. Uh, I will also need a, power, a ore eraser. I am not going to be using the ores up in this area. So this will make it so that I'm not, you know, um, not getting complaints about, oh, oh you, you built on top of ore. Uh, I have a hard time with that. Anyway, so I'm going to pause for a moment while I clear out inventory and make sure I have saved these planners in my blueprint area and move blueprints from the main area to the game area, and I will be back. So hitting pause. Okay, inventory is cleaned up, and I have set the logistics to get me a few of each thing, so not just for today, but for uh, eventually building more of everything and doing the oil. I've, I've got my <clears throat> my pump jacks and my oil processing stuff all set up here. Uh, I even have some centrifuges if I should ever want to build more nuclear, which I probably won't because nuclear is bad. Okay. Um, it's, I like nuclear in real life, but in game, uh, I have heard that the fluid dynamics do bad things to your UPS. So we're going solar. Oh, did I include solar panels here? Um, I am not sure. I really ought to carry some with me. Um, solar panels and accumulators. There we go. <clears throat> and I will add things to my hotbar as needed um, when I'm building things. For the moment, it's just going to be blueprints. <clears throat> so let's let's grab them. I need to copy from well these. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to leave these in my blueprints. Uh, the, oh, do I need to copy into game? No, but I do need to copy the other ones to game. So planting acre is already here, but it's the wrong one. So I'm going to delete that from the game. I'm going to copy this one instead. And I'm going to use create copy for all of these because it's entirely too easy to delete something from the main blueprint book and somehow lose the save or rewind and forget to put it back in. So we always copy. Create copy. Game blueprints goes there. So there's my new layout for my cell, which has the proper signaling for a 3.8 train and power and rail and all of that. And we're all set there. And service junction which has its this is just the service junction from the big cell I did over there this has the uh, tightened up signaling so let's create a copy of it game blueprints boom and I'll put that down there this will this will help if I need to touch it up for anything <clears throat> so with that in mind uh, I can now start doing delete guys and we are going to start off let's see I need to have at least one cell where we're going to be just normal and I want to lay this down fresh when I'm done so we're going to work him off to the left and then delete and put him back down again So 
but there's aligned with my grid. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. If I take my finger off the button, I end up sliding it. We're going to run it down, out that far. I could probably use an absolute on this if I could work out the, the number. Um, actually, let's do that. Let's set this to absolute, and let's work out exactly where I need to, to offset this to get the absolute right. So that's not right. Um, so... That would be there. Let's increment uh, the horizontal by, let's see, 30, 60. Increment the horizontal by 90. That should bring us over. <clears throat> well, actually, if I do it by 90, I won't know which way it's going because these are 180s. So I will do it by 30, 60. So, let's see, X, uh, I think it's X uh, by 60, it's 92. So, incrementing it by, by that amount moved to the left. So, it could increment it by another 30 and change. So, 122. So that needs to go another 10 to the left. 8 is the span between those guys. So I think 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah, another 10 to the left. So 132. That went too, too far, so it's only 130. There we go. So that's horizontal. And now we want vertical, so we're going to increment the vertical, well, the decrement the vertical by, uh, uh, how about by 60 and half of 60, so a 30 and half of 30 of 45, let's do 46, has to be an even number. We can't decrement by 46, so instead we'll increment by um, increment by 90, 120. Let's do 152. So incrementing, I think, was moving up. So we're going to come by another 10. 162? Yeah. There we go. I think this is going to be the same thing. So this guy is 130, 162. 130, 162. Let's see if this comes close even. Oh, uh, absolute. And that is indeed good. But it's way up there. <laughs> um, let's see here. You know, I think I'm offsetting the wrong one. I need to set this number here. So let's try this again. So 
Let's increment the horizontal by 10 and see what happens. Okay, so that moved me to the right, so we need to be at minus 10. And I'm going to say 20 on the Y. So 20 moved us down, and we need to move up, so minus 20. Uh, we need to move up further. Minus 40? Perfect. So these are now set to be absolute and to match the grid that we've been laying down. So now I don't need to worry about pre-aligning. So let's go ahead and kill off the world here. Uh, let's fix the other one similarly. The new cell. Um, this is all awkward. I really want to have that kind of placement. And we'll manipulate the absolute, the, the bottom ones here. So this is wrong. So X, we're going to increment by oh, 60. Since I'm not sure which direction it goes. We're still hunting. That's better, so we want another another chunk to the right, another 20 or so. 80. Another 2 to the right. Perfect. Now downward, um, need to go down by, well, each one of those power poles is 30, so this is uh, 30 plus a little over half, so 45, 46, hold it, let's do by 50. Perfect. So now we start from here, and we can drop all of this down like that, and that's just confirming things. And we go to two more to the right like that. And the other thing I want to do is I want to put landfill behind all of this. Um, click button with a blueprint in hand to add landfill under every entity and tile. Shift click to add only under entities. Always removes existing tiles. Okay. Blueprints in your inventory are permanently changed. Blueprints in your library are not. So this needs to be in my inventory for me to do this. So, new cell. And that worked. So those now have, la those now have landfill under them. Do the same thing for this guy. that worked and now we put our our blueprints back in game blueprints service junction and new cell and I'm going to copy them back into my main blueprint book create copy back to my blueprints this is service junction this guy goes away And this guy can go away. And new cell. Create copy. There's new cell. Okay. So we are all set.
we have to go over it twice because the first time we stop there it puts in the landfill and the second time we go over it, it can put in the entities. And we're just going to stop all of this down through the entire interconnect area because there is no downside to having this set up. I want to stop short of my main vertical here because he's going to be a different problem. And that's as far west as I'm going for the moment. Let's Let's run this up on the left here, just like that. Okay. So that has set up power and signals. And now I want to move some of this stuff. Um, LTN Infinite Fuel, for instance, I want to have this placed somewhere else. So we're going to pick the whole thing up just like that. In fact, I'm going to control X, which I believe gets me also its signal, its uh, name. And we're going to zoom out and we're going to put the infinite fuel way over here. Um, somewhere that would be awkward. Uh, Let's put it here. There. So now we do have a place that needs fuel in bulk. And I hope he's got frequent enough trains. The other thing is this guy right here. Um, this train is batteries. And he really needs to go back where he came from because these stations are just going to go away. Just like that. So now if any of those trains that have duplicating chests get sent, um, they will they, they will not be able to go anywhere and they will raise errors. So that's good. Those are TSM trains that are being sent somewhere that no longer exists. So now we can extend our properly signaled stuff down to the lower right. Oh, this didn't go far enough up. Or did it? Uh, turn on signals. Okay, he's far enough up. So we want to start where we're badly signaled. Um, we are going to lose connection to our main base temporarily. That's all right. Um, uh, I guess I can copy this up just like that uh, does this that actually does work how about that so we're not going to lose connection to the main base we maintain connection to the main base through the new area just like that. Now we actually have some signals in there that are unwanted. Um, yeah, let's get rid of those. And the way to get rid of those is to delete everything from the ones that are bad and copy everything down from the ones that are good. There. Now I can bring this, and I'm going to use snap to grid relative 180, 180, like that. And now this is my standard layout for my station, my, my transit from the central area. Oops. 
Let's get rid of that last one. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and of course, we still had some signals down here, so okay, get rid of that. And do this again. There. Now with that set up, I can run this down. Okay, that's all set. So I'm going to run this over to get the radars in place out to here. Okay, there we go. Too bad you can't re can't relocate a tag. Okay, with that in place, now we can start from here, and I'm going to delete all of the signals and power from here over up through until we are to where we are good. I think it's to here. This is going to take a moment. Factorio doesn't like it when you delete all that stuff. And it's entirely likely at this point the trains are going crazy. So let's get this laid back out. Let's see, can I bump out one more? Yes, I can. So we are working from bottom up here, getting all these signaled for 3-8 trains. Okay, um, if I go ahead and run these in, they will put down stuff where they can, and I hope this doesn't conflict with anybody. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to put in one more line to the left, two more, because I slipped. So we have some extra traffic lanes if we need them. And all this area in here is now still signaled for the wrong stuff, but the signaling is going to be tricky to get rid of because we have trains running right now. So first off, how do we do this? Uh, very carefully, I'm going to come in here and we're going to do this one row at a time. So uh, these guys, from here down through there. Hopefully I didn't disturb this too much. <clears throat> uh, maybe the right thing to do is to go ahead and just delete the signals on the main lines and take the hit and resignal things as necessary. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to do that. So I did down through these signals here. I did not necessarily do these guys. So let's take the vertical out, and I will resignal my input. I'll resignal the, the trains coming in and out here. Okay, 
So good luck anybody that wants to move that area and we can start from here. And let's go. Now, if I went one more, this would all run up in, into here. <clears throat> there. Okay, so from here, the problem is that this really doesn't like to walk on water. So we're going to hit south instead. But now I can walk through the water on the grid and I'll be just fine. So what do I need here? I'm going to need to have a whole bunch of thought and signals like that okay so <laughs> uh, yeah, we need more rocket fuel than we've got here. Um, hold on. This should be supplying. Um, AAA infinite rocket fuel one right there. Hello. Oh, come back to that. Huh. And all this time, I wasn't actually on my my Spider-Tron. <clears throat> okay, Spider-Tron, back to me. So there, 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 and back to me. I want to fix up that. Yeah, let's let's fix up the fuel situation before I head down in. I get that makes those audio bleeps. Okay, now I am in the Spider Tron. So, stations. Uh. There should be infinite fuel, AAA infinite fuel. Oh, haha, <laughs> right. I placed it down. I forgot that these are duplicator chests, so they need something to duplicate. So we need to get in here and go boom on all of them. There we go. Oh, the other thing is, the trees are the true enemy. Let's just kill all the trees and rocks. scheduled. Uh, we were fixing up the signaling on that vertical line over there, so let's run down to here and run across.
So the issue here is that we have trains. It's left hand drive, so trains are coming south and they need to head out to these guys. And this is actually boom, 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 boom. And we are coming south. I want to put it down here like that. south, so here, and here, and this needs to be a... Is there enough space out here for a 1-4 train? Yes, there is. So I'm going to go ahead and just put it here. Placing this on the bottom half of the power, so it's the leading edge of the rail as I enter it. So that vertical is resignaled. Next vertical. Uh, I am going to want to start far enough to clip off. No, I just need to do this much of it, really. In fact, I only really need to do this much of it.
Is there anything to? I don't think there's anything to myself. Yeah, we don't. We don't even need this rail down here. And now we see that we have some <clears throat> we have some 38 trains that are going to be coming through here. So this is this is where we need them down below is we're just where we're being consistent. Okay, I think this is yep, now the next one. Again, we want just the stuff in between the rails. Just me, or does that look busier than it used to? That's correct. Okay.
So let's see, our total production here, still about 9 gigawatts, uh, 9.6 gigawatts, and dominated by 1.8 gigawatts of beacons. Yep, okay. And assembling machines. Okay, got it. meditative so this vertical is needing help let's start here and this is correct up to the ear Scan down until we find one that's wrong and stop here. Okay. here oh okay yeah that's okay just fix these up in bulk. Oh, this entire horizontal line is wrong. <coughs> okay, so we're going to bulk fix from there all the way out to here.
These intersections may not be right, but I think I'm going to leave them. And I think at this point I'm going to put a pause in and smack down some more stuff. This has been a, a long, long enough to give a sense of what's going on. Okay, and we're back after a long pause. I've finished relaying out all of the grids here so that we are all uh, compatible with the 3.8 chains. That includes all the way down here. Uh, we have not changed anything at all about these stations, so these existing stations that have uh, need for large amounts of iron and copper plate still have just their normal um, normal unloaders. Like, let's go down and take a look at those. Hole removing down there. With the three eight trains now set up on this grid, our next steps are going to be to, to place depots and to hook up our mines. So let's take the, let's take a think about the depots. Uh, we had these four lines which I have dovetailed in. Uh, as we can see, they're labeled here. So the inner lines we got um, well starting from the far right we have full ore is going north. So that means the full ore will be going to the west along this line. <clears throat> this is for all of them. So this line is the one where I want my ore to be coming in from here. Let's add a tag. Now, I do have a little bit of a worry about how frequently the trains move. Let's add that up. So wagons per minute. Um, yeah, so I will not be able to move enough wagons across that one rail for this. So as we crank things up, I'm going to have to revise this to have this intersection also at these intermediate points so that we can have ore coming in on all three levels. That'll divide it in three. So basically instead of 42, well 42 wagons per minute, um, that's six trains per minute. That's every 10 seconds we're going to get one. So that would be <clears throat> a train every 30 seconds for iron and less for those. So at three three guys coming in, that's, that'd be okay. With one guy coming in, let's add it up again. Um, that's six trains per minute, or train every 10 seconds there. And at 29, that's 30, that's 32, that's four trains a minute. So um, 10 and four is 14. And another train a minute is there's 15, another two trains a minute is 17 trains a minute. If it was 20 trains a minute, they mean every 30 seconds, every every three seconds, we have a train crossing here. That's pretty consistent. So I do want to bring it across on three of them. That also means that when we build our uh, depot, we need to have the depots thinking in terms of uh, every three seconds, we've got a train coming through. which means we need multiple depots. So I am going to, over here, start placing some, I'm going to place three depots for the ore trains. And they need to have um, the empties need to come in from below. And this is going to be on all three of these lines. And that I need to send them out toward the right so they come in from below here this is a right hand drive so we're here we enter and we want to head out to the right 
In order to come back from the left and go in. The com guys coming in from the right to the left with their full don't have to stop at the depot. They go on through. So in fact, um, I could stack my depots down, but I do want... Um, this is kind of unfortunate. Um, now that I've done the math, let's rethink about this. It's quite possible that I want my empties coming back on the south side of here, because this is a right-hand drive, minimizing the number of crossings. Okay, so we'll, we'll think about that in a moment. Here's our eight. This is, this should be fast enough. Um, there is the possibility of changing these over to use bulk unloaders. Um, but if I'm going to do that, I need to worry about what if there's something other than copper here. And in fact, in this case, I'm just unloading everything anyway. So, um, now that I think of it, if there's any chance of having something other than the requested material in those wagons, I will need to revise this station to use proper filtering. Oi. Yeah, that, that's going to be important. So we have a couple of challenges now. We have the problem that a train every three seconds for ore is going to be a challenge and an empty every three seconds. And now we have what about filtering? So these guys just dump stuff in. That That's, yeah, there's nothing we can do there. Are we doing filtering up here? We are not doing filtering up here. So we are assuming that these bulk trains will never have the wrong stuff in them. This is a dangerous assumption. <sighs> but it does mean that we don't need to have um, don't need to have any cleanups. Well let's let's get started with the depot first. Um, and given the volumes before we get too far on the depot, I want to move all of the uh, empty ore trains so that they are going upwards and out to the right. And we can uh, move these nameplates around. Uh, I'm going to move the nameplates down to here for now. Actually, let's put the nameplates up that far and down that far. So we have uh, two power poles available. Okay. The other thing we want is these um, things here. So if we are doing this with our empty ore, it's no longer empty, empty ore inner south. This is going to be empty ore was going to go right off to the right. What's going on here? Yeah, okay. Empty ore. East. Uh, yeah, let's just say empty ore. So the empty ore is going to the right. Which completely deletes this southbound here. Well, that's nice, because that's the one that was really weird. So yeah, I was just going to swing right into making the depots, wasn't I? Ha ha. That doesn't happen.
Now let's copy that. I'm going to put that on my hotbar real quick. Yeah, this is a major design change. I wish I had thought about this earlier. I think I can just run this up and back and then patch things. Yeah, let's just kill all of this. Kill the entire column. me. There. Was that how I had it hooked up? Pretty much. So all these nameplates actually need to go as well. So let's let's kill the nameplates and on the tile side we need to kill uh what did I use there? I used concrete, didn't I? Okay, we're going to standardize nameplates using the bottommost smelter. So if there's my horizontal line going right, let's see here. Yeah, this is too important really and this needs to hook up down here so what if I modify this entire thing just like that and this is going to be So there we go. There's our return tr our return line for the empty trains. And I put a nameplate down sort of I could relabel them here for clarity. Okay, 
No rails. Do include tiles. There we go. is empty ore and I'm going to call it right east uh, better yet lower east Our labels. Okay. So if those are our proper labels, that means I can kill this and reconstruct from here. from there over and take that and we do it all the way out to there in fact I'm going to take all the way up to there so um, did I grab enough Almost. Ha. Yeah, I forgot about the concretes. This is going to be another long stretch of just plomping down more like this. Uh, I'm going to put this on pause again. Okay, here is my thinking so far. This is the southern part of the smelters. This is the southern part of the smelters. So what I want is to have one in each of the smelters from entirely fed from horizontal lines and I want my plates to head out to the south. Uh, I am hoping that uh, all of my iron plates can actually get on that southbound lane. If not, I may have to do some some fancy stuff. Um, because we have all of that, all of my iron smelting will be sending plates to the south. So the initial thinking is this is 20 wagons per minute, which is three trains a minute, which is every, yeah, uh, every 20 seconds we've got a train. I think that's doable. We're going to feed the ore in from the right. So we've got on the top lane of this right-hand drive horizontal system, we'll have the full, full ore screaming across here and turning north. And the empty plate comes in on the same line. The empty plate trains will then go up into the output of the smelter. When they're done, they're full, they'll come out and they'll go down. Let's take a look at the top half. This is not signaled yet. I'm still labeling these, you know, so I've got full ore going north and full plate going south here. The full plate coming south is from above us. So my full ore comes screaming north and heads to the east here and drops into this station where it drops all of its ore. And when it's done, we're headed empty ore east. And here's the empty ore east going that away. 
So if I've done this right, I should be able to tile this segment from down here up through up here somewhere and put it onto the other uh, smelters. Now I do need to trim a little bit. These guys I need to trim back as far as I'm going to be loading. Uh, that's going to go all the way back to that station actually. Uh, actually all the, way, all the way back to here. I'm having to trim this because it does alter the routing. Now on the right, I don't think I altered any of the routing. So I can start trim, start picking up from here, and I'm going to head out as far as, say here, see if there's anything I don't want to copy. I think this is all good, and I am glad I hit shift there at the last minute because that was the wrong one. I'm going to start copying from here. And we're going to include, let's include all the way out to there. So there we go. Now if I trial fit it, that does fit. Let's put it in my inventory and zoom out a little bit. So if I set this to snap to grid, uh, 360 wide, and 180 high. Then in theory, I should be able to lock that in and drop it down here like that. And I'm going to go ahead and do it all the way out past the edges. I don't mind that we've got some extra stuff. And I copied all the all the helper tags and I forgot to put in the signaling. So we're gonna have to repeat that with better signaling. So we are coming south. So this needs to have a signal here and here. This guy needs to signal here. And this guy needs to signal here. And the output blocks are easier. There is an output. There is an output. This guy's going north. He's got a output there. And this guy's got an output there. So checking our blocks really carefully. Trains that are not actually intersecting do not interfere with each other. Yay! So more signaling. As we go north, these are trains coming from the north headed south. Uh, I want to put these guys in. This is over signaling, but I'm okay with it. We're going to need to make sure that we get, oops, let's leave him there because he's going to be in all the others. Now, if I've done this right, then we probably have, yes, this area from this signal down and that area from that signal up are more than a, you know, they are more than long enough for an entire train. So that's actually a good signaling. Up here, signal before we go in and signal before we go in and signal as we come out here and this is going to be just a chain signal because yeah now I could just move this up and I will
Likewise down here, we don't actually need this signal. So I, I actually ended up removing that. That's fine. So our southbound traffic is going to be spaced out because we don't have enough room for two trains in there. But like I said, I think 10 or 15 seconds per train, we're good. So let's assure that my signaling is removed. Um, I'm going to remove all the signaling from that area that I'm copying down and rebuild it. So boom, all the way through on there. And from where I am, I'm only keeping this much of it. So from here, there. So we've got the signals down here, which are, are correct, and they will copy up to here. So now I just want to copy from there up through there. Snap to grid, relative, 360 width, and 180 height. And there we are aligned. So I believe we are now properly signaled in the middle. We have plate coming down. Um, obviously this is this is extraneous, it'll never be exercised, I'm going to leave it there. What we're now missing in the middle is just these guys, and that is easy enough. we we'll just do that, and again we're going to snap to the relative grid again, 360 wide by 180 high. And this is our reference. The other thing we're missing is the plates heading south. So we're just going to grab that, same thing, snap to grid, relative, 360 wide by 180 high. We're here. There we go. So now we have all of our plates being routed down. We have our plate empties from the right. We have our ore full from the right and our ore empty is going back to the right. You notice here that the ore uh, full is coming in above and empties are coming back below. So I want three depots that receive from below and send out to the right. Uh, they don't need to worry about the the full ones coming back, but if they come in from below and out from out in the top, we're good. And these are left-hand drives. Okay, so if this is left-hand drive, we're going to be coming in. We'll make the crossing, and we'll be able to come over. So we want our train stations to come up from the right, and we'll have fuel on the left. So they look a lot like these guys, but longer. Um, because they're longer, we won't be able to fit two, so we'll, so we'll just have the one, and we'll center it. Okay, so let's work on the, let's work on the depot next. I'm going to go plan it out, and I will be back with a working depot. Okay, and we are now back with the large depots. I believe these work. There was some initial confusion because I placed them down and they all had the same names. 
and that confused the requests for fuel because the fuel stations all had the same names. Called them A, B, and C. I decided to split the depots up also. Hopefully, um, LTN may or may not be smart about picking which trains to schedule from the depots. I'm hoping that the depots are uh, used appropriately. Um, oh, uh, chances are, because it doesn't know geometry, it will pick a train in one of the depots and it will send that train out to get ore. That's fine, actually. Um, the ore will deliver, so the only jiggity-pokey is going to be coming back from empty where it will have to come out from wherever it delivered and then realign with its appropriate depot. I don't think that's a problem. I think we've got plenty of space there. Um, these guys are going to come out on the horizontal lines. Oh, 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 almost forgot. These guys need to be connected, don't they? Yes, they do. Let's, uh... Let's see if I can do this properly. There. So now my ore is going to come across on these top three lines. And it's full of ore and it's going to come... What the heck? No, it's going to come off on these three lines. So the full ore train comes through here and gets picked up and routed north and east and it dumps. And when it's done dumping, it comes back north and it's on these three lines and it's going to have to jig down and come in. So in my initial plan, I had the ore flowing in on the top and out on the bottom, but of course these are right-hand drives and by moving around this way, I reduce the number of crossing trains so that essentially the uh, the full ore trains coming in are really only crossing with the, the full plate going out to the south for any given column. So I think that reduced the, tra the traffic potential. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Anyway, with that set up... Um, we should be able to start putting some trains on these depots and then hooking up train lines to the quarries and mines and so on. And if I did it right, we should immediately start pulling in ore into the smelters. I may have to go uh, enable requests on those guys. So I've got that turned off so that we don't get, you know, tons and tons of alerts. We did get some alerts. Um, in the process of setting up these stations, like I said, I gave all of my fuel stations the same name. And then, of course, they all tried to go to the same place and that caused all sorts of traffic and they all stopped. And that prevented me from delivering uh, fuel, delivering rocket fuel to somebody who needed it. So there we are. Okay. So the next step is sending um, sending trains out to these guys and taking the input back. And these are going to be, um, well, catch as catch can, I guess, is the best way of putting it. Um, so these lines, what we're joining up with, is an outbound on the right and an inbound on the left. Just boom, boom. So it's it's basically these guys, just like this. So I am going to try something. Uh, I'm going to start by placing down my standard cell. I'm just going to put some standard cells down the right here to act as kind of a guide.
Now, this is my access back to the main base. Um, I think we can dispense with this rail through here if we jigger it into these lines. So currently it's all set up for here, so I can scrub from here down. Like that. Boom. All gone. And now this is just normal grid. But I want to fix this up. Whoops, I am not on my Spider-Tron. So I decided a while back that I didn't want to do this kind of thing. So what I really want is for these are left-hand drives and these are right-hand drives, so... Really, they just go like this. And with that done, that all goes away. Just like that. Now this is interesting. What's going on here? Uh, am I having power problems? Oh, right. <laughs> My power comes south from here. So this is a non-optional connection. There we go. Okay, so that has the main base. Notice how much closer I am. The grid base is getting very large, and it's it's very sparse. Um, at this point, the train pathing is probably going to be expensive. Let's see if it's if it's uh, train pathfinder is still yeah, it's not doing a whole lot. I'm not too worried about that yet. Maybe when I'm done, I'll go through and I'll just kind of uh, tear out the, uh, the lines that aren't needed. So, now what I need to do is, from here, just run it over and connect them up. And maybe the easiest way is to run over cells over the top. Let's see, this guy ends up here. Yeah, let's just run that line of cells over there. See how that works. That'll be here. Scrub back and forth a bit until it's done. And I could run cells down. Um, yeah, why not? Let's let's just put this put the cells out here. Um, I can always delete cells that I'm not interested in later. So don't put down a cell if it's going to cause problems, but do put out down a cell if it's going to solve problems. I don't think that's a good cell. Yeah, gotta watch that. So we're gonna continue with putting down the mines wherever it makes sense, and we'll just delete cells for wherever we're putting down a mine. And we're not going to try to align these stations. I mean, they, I could, at this point, decide, oh, I'm going to relocate these mining load stations to be properly gridded up. Um, don't think I'm going to do that. Did 
delete. So let's start out with the iron mine. My dogma so far has been that we don't connect these horizontal lines, that we use these these guys on the left and the right. They're left-hand drive, so this guy's coming down and it will feed this. And there we go. And this guy's coming up, and it's over here, so we're just going to take this. Just like that. So this is now hooked up. Now given that we're connecting into the the grid, I am seeing less and less of what's going on here as being important. Um, these stations are heading downward. Why are we looping them back up when we could just send them out here? So I am going to start trimming and fitting. So this is right-hand drive, this is left-hand drive. So we're going up here and down here. Well, let's send it up here. Haha, <laughs> we can't. So we need to send it off to the left, which means left and down. That's not going to fit, so we're just going to take it on up. And I think if we're going to do that, let's do it right. So the question is, since we're being fed by the grid, do we need any of the rest of this? And the answer is, no, not really. So because we extended the grid out here, we are now going to simplify this station. We're going to remove these rails completely, and these rails. We do not need the through. And this is an extra loopy loop de loop that I don't need. So we're gonna trim that back to here. And now this is just a normal feed. Left hand drive means we're coming down. So that does invite us later on to do something less complicated here. Uh, get rid of the undergrounds, maybe take these stations and put them uh, in a better configuration against that guy over there. Uh, but it also means that it's time for me to wean him from his infinite power. And that actually fits there and there. So I can use my normal stride at this time for him. For him. Maybe not the others. Remember, these were not laid out on grid. So there we go. So now if somebody were actually to request uh, 
copper, iron, excuse me, iron ore, uh, we would probably be able to supply it to them. Let's see. Stations. Uh, do we have? Yes. Uh, yes. Iron ore A and B are right here. They each have 128k ready to go. So we could request it in. And I think I like the idea of testing that before we go any further. I saw one more blinky. There it is. So the question is, can I turn on the requesters from over here in God mode? Uh, I'm going to just hit this guy up and say, uh, nope, I cannot. So I'm going to have to actually run across the world to s set up those requests. Oh, we're also going to need coal. Let's, let's hook up coal before we do. Since that is so easy to hook up, Here's coal. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to clip off the ends and clip off the stuff in the middle. I can do that from from the map view. So clip and clip. Um, I don't trust myself to clip the vertical ones from map view. So now this needs to head off to the left. It's left-hand drive, so this one's going down. Now I think I might actually have enough space here for a complete train. Why, yes I do. More than enough. There we go. And this guy's coming down, so we are going to... There. I believe this is a big enough for one train. Yes, it is. So that goes there. Don't need to signal the vertical. Uh, he will just work. So now we are going to bring power in. Let's see if we got lucky. And we got lucky. Oh. Okay, so we can't quite bring this out. But we can go in like that. a remarkably level power. Notice at this point that our our beacons were running here. At this point our assembling machines are also running hot. That's pretty good. That got me a spike 7.6 hours ago. But for the last hour... Oh, these guys pretend... They actually... Uh, produce and consume their own energy. So they, sh they show up. I'm going to be glad to get rid of those. So now we should be able to request in coal. And this is 
triple A coal B and triple A coal A. So let's bring this up. Can I search for coal? Yes, I can. There we go. So we now have coal and iron ready to be requested in. Let us make that happen. Uh, going to start with iron smelting A. So we know what the slowdown is here. We've got a couple of things that are doing it. First of all, we have a lot of radars out. And we know radar slows us down. I think I can pick those up fairly soon. Uh, the second thing we know is slowing us down is that Creative Mod uh, does a lot of work behind the scenes to keep things full. And that's going to be our limiting factor because we can't turn that off yet. Soon, not yet. Um, beyond that, we'll have to see. Uh, given everything, though, um, I'm going to go ahead and start killing off the Creative Mod stuff. So, what do I want to delete here? I want to delete the super radars. And just in case I find any, I want to kill off the substations and the passive energy sources. Let's start by doing that to my entire main grid base. We don't want to do that to the... Well, actually, no, let's go ahead and kill off all of that everywhere. Which means these guys no longer have power or radar. Whoops. Did I hold down shift? I think I held down shift. Okay, so I'll be handing off 362 radars and four powers. Got it. And there our radar went away. And yeah, UPS seems to be floating up a bit. Good. So now we want to go to our iron mine. We're here. And slowing things down so I don't run over a train. Just turn that on. Now, it won't be able to do it because it has no station supplying coal in Network 1. Well. This guy isn't network one, this guy is network two five six. Now there are no actual trains in network two five six. So network zero X one hundred. So now we need to go set up some trains. We are going to need some of those and some of those. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put four trains in each of the depots and get them all set up but without turning them on. And then I'm going to release all of them at once if I can. I may need to put radar over them to do this. I put some extra lines on here that don't have um, 
Why is this not? It should have fuel. It's got fuel. Did it not have bots? I didn't drop bots. Okay. Which means that this is going to take a moment to get bots going for me. Uh, let's spread the bot wealth around a bit. You build the stations, you gotta put the bots in. We had a problem with that uh, off camera on the other stations where when I moved the depots, I didn't put bots in. And while I was letting it run, it eventually had trains running out of fuel because they kept going back to the depot and not getting fuel. This guy has bots. Let's start off by building them down here. Oh, if I actually put them in place, yeah, uh, I want these to be automatically fueled for me. So we're going to just put them in here, just like that. Oh no, this station doesn't have these. <gasps> Something to check. There. So it's only this leftmost rail that doesn't have the requesters. Everybody else should. And you want to go to AAA Depot 256A. Uh, let's search for Depot. There's 256A. He's going to stay on manual until I've got all of these done. Okay, so that's what a train looks like. Okay, four of those. These are going to end with a different schedule, but I can just place them down. I'll fix the schedules coming south. No trains, no trains, no trains. Okay. Now this is 256C. Guys, gonna be 256B. Okay. Let's wait till these guys have got some fuel in here. Is that not fueling? Oh. Because that's not wired across, because I didn't clip enough of it when I did this. Did I do it up here? Did the same mistake up here. be able to come on control shift C all of these guys and they're now rolling out yay
So let's watch what these trains are doing. Got one here and one there. This guy looks like he's going for iron. Yep. Probably coal, probably another iron. Coal. Oh, betcha iron and coal. Yep. That was a very fast load. So, I don't think these are actually loading anything. didn't pick up anything. Oh, this got 16k of it. Yeah, okay, so they did, they do have the shipment in there. That's a very, 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 very fast load. Let's go look at the at the smelter and see if it's actually firing it up. No radar, so I can't zoom in and see it. We just have to be patient. a river of plate. So in the time it took me to get back here, these have already started trying to load and they've already started to fail because I didn't finish the balancers. <laughs> oh, you idiot, you idiot, idiot, idiot. Uh, this is all unfinished. Okay. Um, I want some, I'm, I think I'm going to want belt immunity equipment. There's a normal belt immunity equipment. I don't need to go to the cheats for this. Um, there it is. There, now I can stand on the belts. So, um, these guys need to be connected here. Like that. And now I need arithmetic combinators so I can Take the total quantity in inventory, which is zero. Divide it by, hold on, get this right. Each, divide it by minus eight to each. And now these guys, everything less than or equal to 15, this should be allowing it through. Oh, because these are filter, these are filters, 
and I didn't set the filter right. So if I had used normal, it would have just started loading in and stopped when it got to 15. So now the problem is that they do need to well, let's see. Uh, I could set the filter there. I don't need to. Um, I think what I'm going to do is take this and say, please upgrade, quote unquote, from the Express Filter Mini Loader to the Express Mini Loader. Okay, and this will get things going here. And these should be well balanced. So now I should be able to grab this like that. And let's go fix the other ones. The other fix was that these needed to be encoded network ID 256. And then we turn that on and turn that on. And I'm just going to continue on with the next one. I should now have more big trains going out to get ore and coal. So we need more trains. <laughs> Am I surprised? No, because this is an initial load of four trains of coal plus four trains of iron into each one of these. But now it's worthwhile to actually go out here and once everything gets to steady state, I will replicate the trains across. Uh, I need to fix the output filters on all of the smelters and enable everything and when we come back I will have it all turned on and we should be at steady state. Uh, then we can go start on the next thing. In fact I think I'm going to break the episode here and we'll start the next recording when I'm ready to start routing the outputs of the smelters.